The big three, AMD, NVIDIA, and Intel, all just had their back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back press conferences at CES 2022, and the stakes to see who came out on top with their big announcements have never been higher. This is Luke with Digital Trends. Before we move on, hey, if you watched the keynotes or read some of the coverage, what do you think? Who do you think came to CES among these three companies with the strongest computing announcements? Leave me a comment down below and let me know which announcement you're most excited for. Okay, so let's start out with AMD. I know they are a fan favorite among the CES crowd, and I gotta say, they did not disappoint this year. The CEO of AMD, Dr. Lisa Su, took the stage. And while there wasn't quite as much excitement as there would have been if this was taking place in person, she's kind of a rock star in the computing world. And the headlining announcement, of course, was Ryzen 6000, the company's latest mobile processors. Now, these aren't what I'd call a game changer or anything. They are certainly just an evolution of last year's Ryzen 5000 chips. But yes, they do claim to hit five gigahertz now, which feels like an important milestone for AMD. But more importantly, they have really reinvented their integrated graphics on these APUs. Now using the same RDNA 2 architecture as their own discrete graphics and even what's in the latest consoles. I know, integrated graphics are not normally the most exciting thing in the world, but according to AMD, they are on average over twice as powerful as last year's. And that's in real world frame rates from a number of popular titles. They're even adding Fidelity FX Super Resolution to these APUs, and according to AMD, you can even play a game like Far Cry 6 at near 50 frames per second in 1080p at medium settings. And that's with FSR turned on, but again, these are integrated graphics we're talking about. I count that as a major win for AMD. Easily the biggest win for AMD though was actually a Ryzen 5000 chip, strangely enough, but this one was special, the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D. And the 3D in the name refers to 3D vCache, which is basically stacking cache right on top of the chip itself. It's a brand new technology that was announced last year, but this is the first chip to actually use it. And AMD says that this 3D vCache makes this Ryzen 7 processor 15% faster at 1080p gaming than its own Ryzen 9 5900X. For a brand new technology, that's extremely promising. AMD also announced a total of eight new mobile GPUs. I won't go through them all here, but it finally feels like AMD is building up its portfolio to start challenging Nvidia a little bit. Let's be real, they've got a long road ahead of them and the very slow rate of adoption for AMD graphics in laptops has been a pretty major setback in the past year. And while the addition of the Alienware M17 this year is a good sign, I didn't get a sense that this would be the banner year AMD would take on Nvidia in the same way that it has Intel. Next up, let's talk about Nvidia. This was a pre-recorded video and it was completely Jensenless, but Nvidia did pump through these announcements one after another pretty quickly. Some new GeForce Now games, more DLSS and ray tracing games, that kind of thing. But the biggest win I think for Nvidia was their RTX 3080 Ti and 3070 Ti mobile GPUs. Not exactly much of a surprise, but being able to say that the 3080 Ti in a laptop is more powerful than the Titan RTX it's a pretty impressive statement. Another win for AMD was how strong it went after the MacBook Pro. I really liked that they didn't shy away from that comparison, like everyone else is, but instead showed how its own studio laptops, which now have that new RTX 3080 Ti inside, do have considerable strengths over the M1 Max. Nvidia claimed it was up to seven times better in certain 3D workloads, and while that may not hold true for other creative fields, I do think that Nvidia is smart to point out the places where an old-fashioned discrete graphics card is still miles ahead of what Apple has been able to do so far. What felt like the biggest whiff from Nvidia though was their announcement of the RTX 3090 Ti, or Ti, as they've been saying. The RTX 3090 Ti, our next BFGPU. Look, I'm never not going to applaud you for making the fastest graphics card ever made, but right now, it just feels a little tone deaf, especially if they're not going to address you know, the elephant in the room, the GPU shortage. They just don't really sound sorry that you can't buy a graphics card right now and probably won't be able to for a lot of this year. And the RTX 3090 Ti, I'll hold my judgment until we review it ourselves and until we get a final price. Not that the retail price even matters, but I actually think I'm more excited about the $250 RTX 3050, which was also announced. This feels like the kind of GPU that needs to be out there in the market accessible to people. So hopefully that actually happens. 
And last up is Intel, which had a very old school presentation. And I have to admit, it did make me feel like the world was back to normal. And I was back in Vegas at an awkward tech press conference again, and it was great. And you can see, it's gonna end up right on my TV so I can share it with everybody. See, you caught me by surprise, GB. But awkwardness aside, Intel did have a couple of very important announcements. They just didn't get into very much detail and even beyond the press conference itself. Intel just hasn't shared a lot of information on these upcoming products, many of which I am legitimately excited for. They detailed the new 12th gen H series processors, which do look quite capable building on the success they've had with Alder Lake so far. I do think these are going to impress people, especially since this hybrid architecture they're using seems like it would be the most beneficial in a laptop. But then they didn't even really talk about their lower powered products. They did mention a 28 watt P series chip, but they didn't really go into very much depth. That's just not really how you want to introduce a brand new line in the portfolio, in my opinion. And they kind of did that same thing with Intel Arc, which is the upcoming discrete graphics that they've really been building up towards. A lot of missing information in detail here, such as, you know, what the performance is gonna look like. But I do think there was a major win for Intel here with Arc, and that's in its ecosystem. They announced a couple of products right off the bat that would use Intel Arc, and it wasn't your sort of offbeat laptops either. This was the Alienware X17, which is a flagship gaming laptop, very powerful, and a Lenovo Yoga 2-in-1, which shows the breadth of what's possible here if Intel can really get its partners to get behind them. Intel says that they have more than 50 PCs that will use Intel Arc to start off, and that's a pretty impressive number for an absolutely brand new product, especially if you compare it to the uphill battle that AMD has had. So, who won? You know, I, I have to give it to AMD again. They certainly came with the largest portfolio of announcements. I didn't even touch on everything. And yes, it's always fun to cheer for the underdog, but AMD just really continues to feel so confident coming into these press conferences. They know exactly what their fans and their partners want to hear, and they don't quite get as lost in the weeds of announcing self-driving cars or whatever else. Their press conferences left me excited, even though I was up at 7 a.m. to watch it, and that's a good sign. Hey, thanks for checking out this video, which is part of our ongoing coverage of CES 2022. And hey, if you want to read more about any of these announcements, head over to digitaltrends.com. We've been covering the entire show and all of these new products. And of course, subscribe to our channel right here on YouTube. We've got a ton more coming this year from CES 2022.